Hey, it's Rick. Welcome to the channel. In this video, I'll show you how I recreated a Beavis and Butthead animation cell from this reference I found online. I like to work on masonite because it's cheap, rigid, and very smooth. I primed the board with several coats of gray acrylic gesso, applying each layer in opposite directions to avoid the appearance of brush strokes. I printed the background out actual size and taped the pieces together. I coated them with graphite and transferred that to the board with a red colored pencil so I could tell which lines I'd already done. I taped off the margins with green painter's tape to keep them clean. I started filling in the large areas with a brush and Liquitex acrylic paint. Some of the reference material I found online had a very watercolor look to it. The large flat areas were kind of modeled with variations in the color. However, some of the episodes I watched seemed to be much cleaner. I wonder if some of the reference images were reproductions. Sometimes they'll release animation cells that weren't part of the show. They were made exclusively to be sold, so sometimes they don't look quite right. I wanted to brighten this image up from what's in the reference. I found it to be pretty faded, and I wanted to intensify the colors a bit. I did a lot of readjusting the colors. I had considered airbrushing the whole background to give it a very clean look, but I thought it wouldn't come out right. The original stuff looks very hand-drawn with no real straight edges. The kind of look you can only get doing it by hand. You'll see me resting my hand on a mall stick in many of these shots. This one I made myself. It's just a wooden stick with a styrofoam ball on one end, wrapped in some soft leather. It keeps your hand off the work, so you don't smudge wet paint, and you don't get any oils from your hand on the illustration. Here I'm correcting the blue sky outside. In the reference, it looks dark out, but I decided to make it a daytime scene. I think it's even more depressing to be working fast food when the weather outside's beautiful and sunny. My first experience with Beavis and Butthead was at the Sick and Twisted Cartoon Festival in the early 90s. It was a show playing at a small theater in Toronto. The show was a collection of wild and diverse animations, with the Beavis and Butthead piece being an animated short film called Frog Baseball. I think this was before it was on MTV, maybe 91 or 92. After completing all the flat colors of the background, I can move on to the line work. I mixed up a very dark gray, but not black. I don't want the background to be as intense as the line work of the cell. At first I tried a dip pen, but that didn't work well. I had to press too hard to get the line weight I wanted, but it was damaging the acrylic paint. Next I tried a rigging brush. This is a long, skinny brush originally used to paint the rigging on sailing ships. I struggled with that as well. I found it very difficult to get a consistent line weight. Then I finally remembered ruling pens. These are a very old invention used to create fine lines with paint. They can be adjusted to different line widths. This worked out much better, and this was the tool I used to finish the rest of the line work. I didn't use a ruler for this as I wanted the lines to be a little wobbly, the way they look in the show. I also went over all the lines twice, giving it an even rougher look where it gets thick and thin in spots. I didn't slavishly copy the reference for this. Since these pieces are more, for me, about nostalgia, I think it's important to make it what I want it to be over screen accuracy. I wanted to introduce a little bit of that splotchy finish to the piece in a few areas, so I used this watercolor technique where I coated an area with clean water and dabbed a dark gray into it. The paint bleeds into the water unevenly, creating this watercolor look. I only did this in a few spots, I didn't want to overdo it. With the background done, I removed the tape from the border. I decided to buy my mat this time instead of cutting it myself. I printed out the characters to size. I printed them both in a right reading one and a reverse one. I used these to help me find the correct placement on the glass. I put one in a position with the tape facing up and put the glass over it. When it sticks to the glass, I can flip it over and line up the reverse image on the other side. Then I'll flip it back again and remove the one from the other side. I clean the glass well, first with a razor blade to remove any bits, then with acetone. It's important that it be perfectly clean now because I won't be able to clean it after the cell's been painted on. I'm using a technical pen with acetate ink to do the line work. It's the only thing I have that's effective on glass and won't be dissolved by the paint I'm going to be using for the color. I'm resting my hand on the mall stick again and using gloves to keep from getting smudges on the glass. This is the most stressful part. It's tough to keep dust and dirt off the glass while working on it. If it's not perfectly clean when you assemble it, any dust or smudges will stand out like a sore thumb. I've had cells in the past I had to disassemble and clean after the fact because one little speck of dust would draw my eye and it was driving me nuts. 
it's pretty easy tracing the characters out this way. You just have to be sure you're looking straight down on the image. The thickness of the glass can cause a parallax error if you're not careful. I do the painting on a light box. This helps me make sure I don't miss any tiny spots and then I get an even thickness of paint. If it's too thin in spots, you'll notice it in the final. It's too dangerous to try to do two coats because the new layer can soften the dry layer underneath and cause discoloration and splotchiness, something I learned the hard way. I use testers model enamel for these. At the time of editing, I think there is only one company still making cell vinyl paints and they're in England, but I could be wrong. The testers paint I can get at any local hobby shop. Some of the colors I had to mix custom since I couldn't find an exact match. This brown for butthead's hair was one of those. The only brown testers had was way too dark. What I'm doing here is flooding the paint on. My brush is soaked with paint and I'm sort of dropping it onto the glass and moving it around with the tip of the brush rather than bending the bristles down onto the glass. If I press too hard, the line work might get smudged or removed entirely. I do all the areas of one color at a time, putting a small fan on it to dry them quickly. You can do several colors at once, but not ones whose edges butt up against each other. If they're both wet, they'll bleed together. I've experimented using different materials for the line work and the color fills, but I always had problems. If I use acrylic for the color, it tends to lift the line work, plus it comes out splotchy. I've got a long list of these I'd like to do. Ren and Stimpy, The Pink Panther, Akira. I think I'd like to get more experimental with these, creating new scenes or maybe mixing up the styles. Blue is one of the more difficult colors. For some reason, it likes to create swirls as it dries, like the pigments are separating, so it needs to be dried quickly. I also had to mix a custom red as the only one I could find was just too vivid. I use these little glass vials I got off Amazon to mix the paint in, and then I can keep them for future cells. I don't know what's in that container Beavis is offering Butthead. I guess it should be fries, but it looks more like worms. Once I finish the cell, it's time to assemble. I put a towel down on my desk to protect the face of the frame. This is an oak frame I got from Michaels, but I had to paint it black with a can of spray paint. I lay the first piece of glass in, then the matting, then the cell, then the background. I hold all of this in place with glazier points. They're a little flat pointy bit you drive into the frame with a screwdriver and a hammer. Then I put a piece of metal wire through the eyelets. And here's the final result. I'm pretty happy with how it came out. Well, that's it for this one. I hope you got some inspiration out of this. Don't forget to hit all the buttons on the way out, and thanks for watching.